Hi and welcome to today's video. Today we're going to do part two of our 3D printed clapperboard project and what we're going to do is we're going to load our STL files. If you remember in the last video we created some uh, some 3D card and we exported as STL files. At this time we're going to import those STL files into Repetia Host. We're going to slice the files with Slicer and we're going to show some 3D printing. So I'll shrink the screen down and let's get on with it. So this is the Repetia Host main screen. Um, you know, it's not much to show. It's a right, uh, middle click, sorry, and you can drag the screen, left click, and you can rotate this cube. That That's about it. So across here on the right, we've got the object placement tab. So if we hit the plus and choose our first clapperboard part, there we go. We'll all remember modeling that last time. And as you can see, repeat your host pretty good at dumping it straight in the middle of the print bed. Now, that's not always a good thing. But in this case, we don't really mind. Um, this black dot here is where the printer is going to be at its home position. And I'm going to print this on the BQ Prusa i3. So the home position is going to be at the front and at the left. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this part. And if I right click the part, you can drag it. Uh, left click and middle click on the part doesn't do anything else. So right click and drags it. And up here, you've got a load of controls. You can copy and center and scale. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to rotate it and I'm going to rotate it on the Z axis. If you're not quite sure what axis to rotate on, down here at the left hand side of the screen, um, it's probably hidden by my face, but I'll move it out the way and then I'll move it back so you can see. There's a little glyph reminding you of the direction of each axis. So if you want to rotate it on, on the blue Z axis, that's where you type the numbers in. And I'm going to rotate it 90 so that it curves at the front. That's pretty good. Now, like I said in the previous video, we need two of these. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy it and I'm going to copy it once. Now, this is a little confusing because it says number of copies one. But that doesn't mean one. That means how many new ones do you want? So how many new ones do you want? I want one new one. So copy and you'll get two. And what I'm also going to do, while the new one is highlighted, I'm going to press this mirror button here. And what that will do is it flips it over so that we don't have to model the thing backwards. So now we've got one, which is the right way around. What I'll do is I'll actually rotate this one through um, minus 90. Where did that go? Repet your horse is really good at hiding parts when it does this. Ah, here it is. I'll just move it back. And then we'll zoom back in. Wheel and the mouse zooms in, but it's pretty slow, as you can see. There you go. So the mirror, what it's done is, it's put this curve on the other side. So that saves us a whole ton of time in 123D design, so we don't have to model the thing twice. So we're going to do that with everything. Now, that's pretty much it for this part. I don't want to overload the print bed. You never want to overload your print bed, because if it goes badly, you've lost all your parts. You haven't just lost these parts, you've lost all of them, because they don't print. So what I do is I just leave... A couple of bits on the print bed so i'm going to move them about two to maybe maybe yeah two squares apart i always like to line them up with a grid I, I don't know why maybe it's just because i've got ocd or something i don't know and what i want to do is i'm going to go to the slicer tab and then i'm going to slice with slicer a big button at the top that's what you do but you'll notice i've got a whole ton of settings down here now i'm going to talk you through these settings i'm not going to go through the slicer config because that's not what this video is about but i am going to talk you through the settings and why i've selected them so, the print setting is 6mm brim. What does that mean? It means it puts a 6mm first layer around the outside of the part. Now, that's to stop the edges kind of curling up if you get heat problems and things. I find it works really well. Now, the printer settings is Prusa because I've got a couple of 3D printers. So, you know, you've got to have different settings. And the extruder 1 on the Prusa is going to be printing ABS. But because it's I've got two printers, I've got a profile for ABS on the Prusa and profile for ABS on the DaVinci. So we're going to select Prusa ABS, obviously. Now, this button, override slicer settings, is very important because it means you don't have to go into the config every time you want to change these few little options here. So we're not going to enable supports. There's no overhangs on these parts. They don't need any support. We're not going to enable cooling because cooling is bad for ABS unless you're doing some like really good stuff. But, you know, we'll we'll cover that <laughs> in, in the future because, yeah, we don't want to get into that. The layer height, you can just literally type a number in here, 0 0.2, 0 0.4. We're going to do it 0.4 because we want a fast print. I don't really mind if the layers are quite thick. 
the infill density, this is a slider, you can just waz that up and down here. I'm going to set that to 25% because I don't really need this part to be that solid. It's going to be glued to the other one. And then you've got infill pattern and solid fill pattern. I just leave mine a honeycomb and rectilinear and that's it. So that's the settings I'm going to use and we're going to hit slice. Now, after a short, well, after a short amount of time, it will slice. And then what you'll see is you'll see a whole lot of blue lines and a whole lot of cyan lines. Now, if I can just take you through this to try and decipher what this means. The cyan lines are a printer movement without extrusion. So it starts at home, it moves in, it does a whole ton of stuff, and then it disappears off up here because when my printer finishes, I've got it retracting to the very top just so that it gets the hot end out of the way while it all cools down. So that's what that line means. Now I can switch it off by chip turning off for short travel moves. And now if I move this around, you can see we have a whole bunch of layers. And we have, you can see there, there's the brim and there's the body and there's the, the pin. It's not, it's not really the best kind of display because everything's blue. But what you can do is you can switch to single layer display and I can drag this and say layer one looks like that and then layer two, three, four and then the pin gets constructed and then we're done. So there's only 13 layers to this part and that's it. So that's the first part sliced. There's there's nothing else we need to know apart from, you know, it's going to take 31 minutes and five seconds to print. And it's going to use 1.647 meters or 1647 millimeters of filament. That's it. If you've got your printer connected to the computer via USB, you can just hit start print and everything's good. The printer will just go. As long as it's set up in the beds level, it'll just go. But I don't do that. I print from the memory card. So what I do is I hit save print and I say include start and end code, include job finish commands. But I don't save in binary format because I just don't. And then we hit save. And then we go to the desktop and then you make sure that you are in G code format and then you type in a name for your part. That's it. So I'm going to type in a P for Prusa because I encode my parts. It's a clap part one. And I'm going to save that. So that's it. I can now copy that part, that file onto the memory card and print it out on the printer. Dead easy. So what I'll do is I shall go back to object placement. I'll press these little bins here and we'll there uh, we'll clear the bed and we'll press the plus and we'll load in clapper part two now this is a bit more interesting this part because you can't get both of them on the bed at the same time so we're going to have to choose how to print this out now as i said in the previous video when we get to a certain layer height in the print i'm going to change the colors so that these raised parts come out white and the rest is black but I'll show you how to do that later on. So I happen to know that my Prusa, this back corner, tends to lift a lot. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to rotate this around 180 degrees. So that all of the, 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 the business end of it, where's it gone? There we go. Yeah, so, the, so the, all the raised sections are in this right hand side where it doesn't tend to peel up. But uh, same again, we just go to Slicer. And it remembers our settings, so we just hit slice with slicer, and that's it. Short delay, and then you'll see the code change. And again, you can see we've got brim. And if we go to single layer, I'll just take that back down to zero. The first layer with the brim, and then all of the other layers. You can see the square gets left out at the side. And then at this point is where we're going to change the color. So we're going to get these layers in white and all the rest of it in black. So we'll show the full code. And we'll save the plot again. Right, so we want to call this uh, P clap 2, and I'm going to call it N because it's the normal way around. And then we go back to there and we clear that and we add another part. It's clap 2 again because obviously we only have the one part. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to press the mirror button, and what you'll notice is. It looks like it's just turned it round, but it, it, it actually hasn't because the, the square gap is at this top side. It was at the bottom before. And then we just hit slice and slice and it it just rattles through it. So generating the G code can be pretty quick once you've got all your slices set and sorted out. Um, for this one, I'm going to call it clap to M for mirror so that I know which parts I've got and which parts I can print. 
And finally, we're going to do clap three. There we go. Uh, yes, this part. Right. So what I want to do is I want to copy it. I want one new copy. There we go. I want to mirror that new copy. That's just moved everything out of the way. So I pretty much want to put them in the center of the bed-ish. Right. Um, let's have a look. Because I'm using the brim, you've got to leave a gap between the parts or the brim will overlap and, and it doesn't like that very much. So what I'm going to do is I'm, I'm going to bias them to the right hand side because of this peeling problem that I have. And I'm going to say that's it. So I'm just going to hit slice and that should slice that part. The G code will upgrade and there we go. And that's it. And again, if I show the layers as we go up in the layers, You'll see where we change color is layer 14, 15. As long as we've changed color by layer 15, layer 16, 17, and 18, the solid layers are going to be white. So that's it. Uh, we'll go back to show complete code. We'll save. And uh, I'm going to call that clap three. And that's it. That, 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 that is it. That is literally the G code. So we just copy that to the memory card for the printer. Or like I say, if you've got your printer connected to your computer, you just hit print and you're off. And what you've got to do now is wait because some of these times you may have spotted, they, they take a while. I mean, the big parts take about four hours each. So I'll set up um, a, a video. I'm not going to do time lapse on this because it's the Prusa and we saw last time the bed moving backwards and forwards makes the time lapse look not very good. So I'm just going to show some snippets. So I should be able to put them in in the next section of the video. Okay, so this is me from the future, just making an interruption to this video. You'll notice that these two parts are now diagonally at 45 degrees on the print bed. That's because when I first sliced them, they were straight and there wasn't enough heat at the very edges of the print bed and they all just lifted off. So sometimes you've got to travel back in time and change things. So this one, I rotate through 45 degrees and it printed out really, really nicely. So there you go, that was the parts put into Repetia Host, sliced up and printed out. So in the next section, what we'll do is we'll remove the brim from the parts. I'll show you how to do that. We'll get some acetone out um, and we'll acetone these things together. So I think all we're gonna need is some acetone, a paintbrush and maybe a couple of wood clamps just to keep the parts together. But we'll, we'll have to see you know, we'll, we'll investigate the parts next time, see how flat they are, or how buckled they are with the heat, because, you know, things just do tend to change shape. But that's all for the next video. So, as usual, please like, comment, and subscribe. I've been Steve. Thanks for listening.